Hello, and welcome to Don't Just Sit There, Do Something, a new series about climate change. I'm your host, Joylette Portlock, and we're here to talk about all the important climate news that unfortunately isn't getting much attention otherwise. And more importantly, give you the tools to do something about it. First though, a little bit of background. The big problem is the way that we get energy, and the main way that humans have gotten the energy to cook food, keep warm, and recently watch television and drive cars has been by burning stuff. When you burn things, you get heat, and you also usually get carbon dioxide, a colorless, odorless gas that then goes into the air. Carbon dioxide is one of a few special greenhouse gases that trap heat, and we burn enough oil, coal, and natural gas these days that we've been seeing temperatures go up around the world, enough to be measured, enough to make the weather start to go haywire. In many places, floods, droughts, and heat waves are all becoming more common. In 2010, the world released 33.7 billion tons of carbon dioxide into the air. That's the weight of almost half a billion army tanks, or 170 million blue whales. Or 67 trillion family-sized bags of Cheetos. What? I'm not, not helping. And once it's up, it stays up there for 100 years or so. So what we do now sets in action the climate changes we're going to see for the next century. Climate changes, of course, that really don't care about human things like country borders or politics. We can now report that our national strategy to deal with climate change, ignoring it and hoping it will go away, is not working. Last November, the U.S. Department of Energy declared that worldwide output of greenhouse gases went up by two and a half million blue whales from 2009 to 2010. This puts us globally worse than the worst case scenario predicted by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change in 2007. The worst case scenario says that global temperature would increase by about seven degrees and life would basically turn into a disaster movie for many, if not most, of the people on the planet. And we're doing worse than that. A week after those numbers came out, the International Energy Agency told us that we only have five years to stop building fossil fuel burning power plants or, quote, it will become impossible to hold global warming to safe levels and the last chance of combating dangerous climate change will be lost forever. Scientists are horrified at both this dire prediction and the 2010 greenhouse gas numbers. I'm horrified. The end of 2011 also saw an important new source of greenhouse gases, pollution in the form of methane, or natural gas. Methane is a greenhouse gas 25 times as good at trapping heat as carbon dioxide, and a massive amount of it is frozen in the Earth near the North Pole. Wait, so like, Santa has gas? The problem is that as the Earth warms, this soil melts. Russian scientists estimate there are thousands of plumes of methane more than half a mile across. So, it's a feedback process. The planet gets warmer because we're burning stuff. Frozen Arctic melts and methane is released. Planet gets even warmer. And lastly, in other climate news you've probably heard nothing about, while all this new research was coming out, the United Nations met in South Africa to come up with a plan. Now, the U.S. has repeatedly come under international scorn for being, up until around five years ago, the world's largest polluter of carbon dioxide, and yet refusing to enter any legally binding agreements whatsoever. This past November, however, just a short while ago, with a new president and a new commitment to green energy, we still refused. Public reaction from the threat to climate change has fallen into three relatively predictable and understandable categories. Denial. La 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 la, I can't hear you. La la la, and even if I could, humans couldn't possibly have that big of an impact anyway. It's probably just that the sun is getting hotter and I refuse to take any personal responsibility. La la la, also, Al Gore sucks. Overwhelmed. Yeah, I mean, we probably ruined the world forevermore, and this is all our fault, but what can you do? I just tried to think about it too much. I mean, anyway, I get to pick up my kid from school and make it to the store before dinner, so... <laughs> Have you seen this? It's hilarious. And desperate. Yeah, I think about it. I I lay awake at night sometimes wondering how I'm going to look my grandkids in the eye and tell them that we cared more about some silly internet video than about that they could inherit a world humans could live in. If one of these sounds like you, rest assured you are not alone. This video is for you. It would be okay to sit on the sidelines if it weren't all of human civilization as we know it at stake. If you don't like the news, 
don't just sit there. Do something. One thing is clear, if we want this world to stay a comfortable planet that doesn't flood us, scorch us, or prevent us from growing food, then we need to be more responsible. Plus, studies calculate that acting on climate would create hundreds of thousands of jobs. This is a time that needs heroes. So can we count on you to be a climate hero? Every episode, we're going to give you two things to do. One easy thing that you can do personally to reduce your impact, and the other is a way to make your voice heard by the powers that be. First, one major way that we waste energy is by heating water. So save energy and use less hot water. Wash your clothes in cold. They'll get just as clean and you'll save 500 pounds of carbon dioxide a year. That's, that's like 500 family-sized bags of Cheetos. Second, the single biggest way we can stop global warming is by changing the way we get energy and by making sure that there's a price to pay for polluting the environment with greenhouse gases. The good news is that the Environmental Protection Agency finally seems interested in taking on this problem. But the EPA hasn't gone nearly far enough yet. Click here to sign the online petition to demand that the EPA start to seriously regulate greenhouse gases as pollutants. Clean energy gets a boost, green jobs get created, and major polluters get in trouble. It only takes two minutes. So sign the petition and wash your clothes in cold water. In other words, don't just sit there. Don't just sit there. Don't just sit there, do something. And that about wraps up our first episode. Don't forget to tune in next time to hear the latest and learn something about climate. We'll be talking about what's up with all this weird winter weather. You can follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, YouTube, or on the web at dosomethingaboutclimate.com.